Today we shall start with a testimony from Millie and Brenda. Then uh, after that we shall continue with the service. So Millie, you can unmute and share with us your testimony. Uh, praise the Lord and good evening to you all. I thank God I had uh, my nose, my nose cleaves had broken for like two months. I thank God I'm now healed. Yeah, and I thank God still uh, that I'm finishing my course. I have hope of finishing my course in time. The Lord bless you. Amen. We thank God for you. I remember those who were at the healing station. We prayed for Millie for unblocking of that nose. She had, she, had, she had been blocked for over two months or something like that. We thank the Lord for the healing. Thank you, Millie, for sharing with us the testimony. Then uh, the next was Brenda. Brenda, you can unmute and also share your testimony. Dr. Brenda. Yes, I'm praise God everyone. I want to thank God for a gift of life, but now you don't thank him for two things. I used to fear darkness to the extent that I used to sleep at 6 a.m. and wake up at 7 when there was no, or if not, I would live like a torch in my room so that I could not, I, I couldn't sleep in the darkness. It was saying that I could, I ended up sleeping either with one of my friends but not in my room because I used to get like sleep paralysis. I used to get visions of funny images and there was something that used to breathe in my room very heavily. So on uh, the seminar of May, I remember when they were praying, I remember I even told a post that I was, I felt heat in my room that day. And um, from that day, actually, there I, something that was breathing in my room, I, I didn't hear it anymore. And it is now three months down the road, I switch off the lights myself and sleep. I no longer have sleep disturbances or fear darkness or sleep late because of or get any funny images. I thank God for that. Then, secondly, I thank God the fact that I got where to practice from because many were saying how they were refusing them. They applied, they turned them down and what. So I remember where I went. I even applied that very day when an application later. So when I reached the VHO's office, he told me, we are not giving any, any more people because the place is full. Maybe you can go to the cow's office and request, but you... He will not accept because he has been chasing people. They have just like 20 people. Um, that day he, he was in a meeting. They told me, wait for him. Like after 20 minutes, he will come. He will he'll be out. I remember praying only one thing. I just told God, I trust you. And I know, I, I know you know what is good for me. So when he came, I went to his office. He just asked me, why this place? And he told me, you are the last person I'm giving. So I Thank God for that. Hallelujah. Isn't Jesus wonderful? You know? Jesus is really wonderful. And uh, we thank God for those uh, two testimonies, Brenda. Uh, we thank God for that healing in the May seminar. Yeah. Just in case somebody thought that these things uh, maybe don't work or whatever, she was healed entirely in the online healing service. As we were praying, the power of the Lord entered her room and dealt with whatever it is that used to keep her from sleeping. Jesus is alive and well and is alive tonight. Is alive tonight. Any one more person who has a testimony? I told you that uh, tonight is going to benefit two 
kind of people. The first group of people is the, the ones who would like to see the Lord use them in the healing ministry. Who are those kind of people? You want to learn how to heal the sick and you also pray somebody gets healed and uh, you know, who are those people? Because those are the, that's the first group that is going to uh, benefit tonight. The ones who want to, the Lord to use them in the healing ministry. I want to see them, you know, so so that I know who I'm ministering to specifically. Specifically, uh, it's possible. It's possible. Disciples are actually supposed to heal the sick. It's part of our our job description. And these signs shall follow those that believe. And one of the signs that is supposed to follow those that believe is that those that believe will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. Mark chapter 16 verse 18. Okay? So, that is the first group, the ones who want to be used in the healing ministry. The second group that is going to benefit are are people who have pains, what, and you are trusting God that he can take away that pain or that condition instantly, tonight, as we minister. Okay, you are on this healing station, maybe it's a problem in the knee, maybe it's a problem, maybe it is migraine, maybe it is what, Maybe it's a nerve issue, whatever. And you're trusting the Lord for an instant, an instant kind of healing. An instant kind of healing. Who is that kind of person? Who is that kind of person? Uh, can you hear me clearly? I saw somebody write about breaking network. Am I clear? Is my network okay? My network, okay? Yeah. So, those two groups of people, the Lord is going to help you. The Lord is going to help you. As I'm going to show you something that I have learned about the healing ministry of Jesus and the healing ministry of the... Um, the early church. I've learned this. I've been practicing. The moment I learned it and I started practicing it, I started getting results. No, I was having results, but they were, my results were like one person healed in six months. <laughs> you get those kind of results. One person healed in a service, those kind of results. Now, when I learned something about the healing method of Jesus, of course, there are many methods. There are many methods. There are many methods. But tonight, I'm going to share with you one of them. The more I apply it, the more I see results. And you're going to see even results tonight in your body. Okay? Now, this is the one, the fundamental thing I learned about how Jesus ministered healing. Jesus did not beg God to heal. Jesus did not cry out to God to heal. Jesus, if I can use a word, Jesus did not beseech God to heal. Jesus commanded healing to happen. Do you get the difference? For example, somebody comes and they are they have a pain. And then I start, oh Lord, see this your servant. You know how he loves you. You know how he serves you. You know how he has been faithful. 
Oh Lord, remember mercy concerning this your servant. He has even faithfully given the titles, oh God. Remember him, oh God. Open the doors of heaven, oh God, and heal this person, dear Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord God, in the name of the Lord, will you move, oh God? Will you move and remember this, your servant? Now, there is a, Jesus did not do that. The guy who, the leper, the leper came to him in Matthew chapter 8. I think it is verse 2. He says, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus looked at him and said, I am willing. Be cleansed. Just like that. He didn't say, oh Lord, you know how leprosy is complicated. Oh Lord, today you're going to show yourself. Oh Lord, you know, you sent me. I, uh, no, he said, I am willing. Be cleansed. It was a commanding prayer. It was. And the other thing I see about the healing method, the ministry of Jesus, is that it was not sophisticated. It was simple. Yeah. It was not dramatic. Hello? Are you there? Are you there? I, 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 tonight I might kind of challenge what you have known to do things, but I mean, if, if you have not been getting results, maybe you could try out this. I've been trying it and I've been getting results. Those who attend healing station and these services know the way we see healings happen in the simplest of ways. In the simplest of ways. Go and touch those keys. Touch this corner of this shaft. You know, you know in the simplest of ways. After an instruction, somebody gets healed. So, it is not sophisticated. Jesus said, though in John chapter 14 verse 12, that very, very, I say, those who believe in me will do the works I do and greater works will they do because I'm going the Father. Now, you need to know the works he did and how he did them. Now, when you believe, you step out and do it the way he used to do it. And I can assure you it was simple. It was not as sophisticated as we make it out. Turning around, whatever, some assault him. No, he says, I am willing. Be cleansed. Be cleansed. Be cleansed. And it is as simple as that. It is, it is simple. You know, in um, you remember the woman who had the bent back for 18 years? Jesus came to the temple, honed this woman with a bent back for 18 years. Do you remember how he healed her? He said, woman, Thou art loosed from your infirmity. And her back straightened up. Yeah, how many words are those? He just spoke. So, the method of Jesus is that he commanded healing to happen. When you see in John chapter 14, verse 13, he said, uh, very, I say, what, whatever I will do, whatever you ask in my name, that the Father will be glorified. I will do, John 14, 13, I will do whatever you ask in my name. So, our responsibility is to believe, okay? Believe what Jesus has said. Believe that he wants to heal through us and step out in faith. And ask. So for me, John 14, 13, when he says, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do that the Father may be glorified. So, for me, I took that verse literal. So if somebody says they have a back which hurts, whatever, I command the back to stop hurting. I say, you back, stop hurting in the name of Jesus. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. He says, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. So I want you, after this semi, to begin asking conditions. That's why we... we 
try to ask people what did they say, what did they say is wrong in the body, whatever. If they say, uh, you know, that my cells are low, I, 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 anyway, for me, the other advantage is that God helped me and I studied medicine. So sometimes I command things basically from my medical uh, understanding. I can, for example, I command the white cells to increase. Yeah. I command the muscles to straighten up. I command the muscles to relax. I command the veins to clear up. Things like that. Okay? Now, you don't have to have gone to medical school or whatever. They tell you, they said, my back, my bones had a problem. Then you command things. Instead of crying, oh God, Lord, this is not how we have been fasting, Lord. It is not about you. It is about Jesus. It's about Jesus. You, you, you can't heal because you fasted for 40 days. Lord, you know I've been fasting for this anointing. Lord, you know I've been what? I know I'm challenging what many people have told me. You know, you have to do this. You have to do this. You have to do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. There's nothing about doing whatever. It is about what Jesus has done. He has provided the healing power. He has provided the name of Jesus. When they came and asked Peter and John how they had healed the cripple, they said, don't think we are more religious than you, or it's because of our, reli our religion or whatever. It, he says, it's because of G the name of Jesus and faith in his name that this man stands before you healed today. Are you with me? So, let me, let me give an example. For example, if you have a pain, I want to do something downstairs. If you have a pain somewhere, whatever, and you are trusting God for instant healing and whatever, just type it in the chat. And I'll, I'll show you something, you know. And, you know, you trust in God for healing and whatever. It is simple. Keep it simple. Don't make it sophisticated. Trust in Jesus. Just step out in faith and trust in Jesus. You know, some people say, what if it doesn't happen, whatever? I'm not. Is it your fault? It, you just step out and do what Jesus said you should do. And then expect him to do what he said he would do when you do what he said you should do. It is as simple. Keep it simple. The healing ministry is supposed to be simple, but we have made it sophisticated. We have made people pay for it. We have, you know, people line up with envelopes of money, and we have made the thing so mysterious. They think like we have something we know, they don't know, whatever. We, it is simple. It is about Jesus and the name of Jesus and faith in that name and stepping out in that name. Believing that as a disciple, he has sent you out to heal the sick. To heal the sick. I tell you the truth. It is, uh, I think, Luke chapter 10, verse 8, where it says, whenever you go to a city and they give you food, eat whatever is put before you. And then he said, heal the sick in that city. He did not say, pray for the sick, beseech me for the sick. Fast for the sick. He said, heal the sick in that city. Heal. Command healing to happen. Ah, are you getting this child of God? I want you to try these things out. I mean, you won't lose anything by trying them out, will you? You won't lose anything. Try these things out. When your child is sick, command healing to happen. Okay. You see that scripture. Whatever city you enter, they receive you. Eat such things as are set before you and heal the sick there. Heal the sick there. Wow. In the, you know, in the days of Jesus, the, these things were, you know, he would speak about them simply. Heal the sick there. Now I send you out in the name of Jesus. Heal the sick in your family. In the name of Jesus. Heal the sick in your community. Heal the sick in your neighborhood. Heal the sick in your house. In the name of Jesus. For me, I believe this word. 
Uh, that's why we do healing special nights of wonder, healing service every day of the seminar, because we believe we have a mandate to heal the sick. And you're not different from me. I don't heal the sick because I'm an apostle. I heal the sick because I'm a believer in Jesus. I tell you the truth. Because I'm a believer and I'm a practicing believer. I am a practicing believer. Yeah. Are you with me? Heal the sick. In, uh, I want to show you something. In Mark chapter 7 verse 34, there is a guy who had, uh, what was it? I think it was uh, a deaf ear or something. I want you to see how Jesus healed that deaf ear. Mark chapter 7 verse 34. Mark 7 34. Epipha, 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 ah, was that word? Then looking up to heaven, <laughs> he sighed and said to him, it's that word, that is, be opened. Yeah. And verse 35 says, immediately his ears were opened. The impediment of his tongue was loose and he spoke plain. He didn't first pray, turn around, whatever, for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. He said, be open. We must believe God and make it simple. Are you getting me? Be open. Be healed. In the name of Jesus, lay hands on the sick. If somebody has a problem in the back, lay hands on the back. Say, you back, be healed. You pain, be gone. And then take the step of faith and ask them how they feel. Because when you pray for them, when you command healing to happen, you expect it to happen. Hey, it's faith business. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of glory. Amen. That is how he healed that thing, the ears. The ears. Now, I want you to see, uh, I wanted to show you another one, Luke chapter, I talked about Luke chapter 13, verse 12. I want you to see Matthew chapter 12, verse 13. Matthew chapter 12, verse 13. Keep it simple. Heal the sick. Don't cry out, oh Lord, you see, you remember when Moses went to cry out to God when the Egyptians were pursuing him. God said, why do you cry to me? Stretch your rod over the Red Sea and it will pass. You know? Matthew 12, 13. Then he said, this is a guy who had the withered hand. Do you know how Jesus healed it? He said to the man, stretch out your hand. Meaning, he commanded the man to do what he was not able to do. That is how we healed. That's why you see us telling people to bend. You know, somebody says, I was not able to bend. You know, those who are the healing station, remember the young man who, the young boy that they brought, you know, he had had the, some pneumonia which had affected him. He was not able to bend. The chest would hurt a lot. And I told him, bend. And he bent. He said, it is still there. I told him, bend again. And he bent. And it was gone. It is, it is, I don't, I don't have an explanation of how it happened, but I don't have to. That is the word of God. You command somebody to do what they are not able to. It is faith. It is risk. Uh, it is, uh, you know, you put your reputation on the line. If this kind of business, if you still have a, a name to, to, to protect, you will not operate in this kind of business. Because you are, you are people, you, you are there saying people might think I'm not anointed. But, I mean, if you're not anointed, already you're not anointed. You're not doing anything, okay? People might think, you know, I've prayed for him, nothing has happened, whatever, you know. It is pride. So you have to die and trust God. Command things to happen. If they don't happen, there is also a verse for you in the Bible. Yeah. The disciples tried to heal the epileptic boy. Nothing happened. When the service ended, they went to him at night. Say, why couldn't we cast it out? So if you pray and things don't happen, in the evening when your prayer closes, go to God and say, but Lord, why? Why couldn't he be healed? And the Lord will tell you the littleness of your faith, your unbelief, 
God will tell you, ah, that one was not for laying on of hands. That one was for casting out of demons. That one, that one, you should have spoken this. You know, it is that is the way things are. <laughs> but if you fear to step out, if you fear to do these things, you fear what people will think. Well, you will not see it. You, I can assure you, the 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 Red Sea. It, it, it only parted when they stepped on it. The Jordan, it only parted when they stepped on it. There are certain things that you will see only when you step out. Yeah. Hallelujah. I said be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Now, Jesus modeled for them how to do this. Now, I want you to see how they did it. John and Peter are going to the temple gate at the hour of prayer and they find a cripple at the temple called Beautiful in Acts chapter 3, verse 6 and 7. I want you to see how they healed that cripple. Acts chapter 3, verse 6 and 7. These are people that had watched Jesus minister healing for three years. And these are people Jesus had said, if you believe in me, you will do the works that I do. Now, they find a cripple, and this is how they do it. Then Peter says, silver and gold I do not have. But what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately, his feet and ankle and bones received strength. Do you see that? The, the power was in Peter. The anointing was there, but he had to speak. He had to declare and to tell a man who had been a cripple for 40 years, because when you read later, it says the man was 40 years old and he had been born a cripple. So he had to tell somebody who has been crippled for 40 years, tell him, rise up and walk. That is crazy business, my friend. That is crazy business, but that is what it is. That is just what it is. Hallelujah. You speak something that is contrary to the report. You speak something that is contrary to what they told the man. What they said, you know, it is crazy business. Rise up and walk. You're telling a 40 year guy who is crippled for 40 years, rise up and walk. But I can assure you, if you're to see them walk, you'll have to say, to tell them to walk. You'll have to you have to step out. The first 20, the first 100 may not walk, but number 101 will walk and your ministry will begin. When, when number 101 walks, you'll never look back. You'll never look back. Now, when you see us ministering and people get healed, when you hear us giving you testimonies of people get healed, getting healed and whatever, don't think we have always been healing them and everybody we pray for gets healed. There are those who never get healed and whatever. We don't talk about them. Yeah, for every two, three people get healed, there are so many people that have not, have tried out whatever they have not. Yeah. But eventually, you get it. Yeah. I think tonight I am teaching you how to heal the sick. I want you to go and try this out. Go and try this out and tell me. You start to see results. You know, for example, I usually tell I've prayed for many uh, deaf, whatever, and they have done. But do you know, there's a time I was in Kavan, in Soul Winner Church, and they brought me twins that were not, they were deaf. I, I was teaching the way I'm teaching. Like I asked you, Anybody with pain and whatever, and nobody said maybe everybody doesn't have nobody has pain. But so I was teaching and I said, uh, I want to give an example of how you command. <laughs> you know, we risk. I said, I want to give you an example. Imagine you're in a church, you're a visitor. You know, say, yeah, just anybody here, I want to show you an example. And I saw everybody looking at, looking at a certain lady. Everybody looking at a certain lady. And then she came forward with her twins. And then she told me, they can't hear. <laughs> My friend, 
That is why I say, Lord, you must have called me into this ministry. Hey, you must have called me into this ministry for what is about to happen. Yeah. Yeah. You then you die because if they don't get healed, yeah. So you, you die. You have to die many days. Sometimes you die many days in the same service. Many days in the same service. Yeah. So I I laid hands on the boys. I think they are boys. Yeah. I laid hands on them and asked them, can you hear? Of course, try to talk to them. Nothing. And they, then the Lord told me they, they had a problem with the, the bones, those ear bones. They are called ossicles. Ossicles. So I laid hands again and I commanded new ossicles. Because you see, you, you need to be able to hear God. Eh? So that sometimes God will tell you, it's not a healing. They need a miracle. You, you, there is a difference between a healing and a miracle. Okay? Sometimes somebody has a problem because they uh, have a missing body part. They have what? You know? So you have to, <laughs> to you know? Yeah. So I commanded new oscars. That's where your science of primary works. Some of you, they are teaching you science in primary. You think you no longer need your science of primary. At that moment, I remembered my science of primary. God helped me remember my science of primary of the bones in the ear. After I prayed for them, I talked in a very low tone because they were short. I talked and commanded them to look up. And both of them looked up at the same time. Their hearing has returned. At the command, their hearing has returned. When their hearing returned, I was preaching there for a week, doing a healing uh, healing meeting. That Nalongo was married to a Catholic who had been stopping her from coming to church. They were having issues, really. He didn't want her to go to the church of Marokole, blah, 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 blah. When she went home and her twins were hearing, Salongo said, I want to go and see that man who has healed my children. Do you see now what one miracle can do? So, on Sunday, I was preaching in the service. They told me Salongo has come to your service. They showed me where I was sitting. That day, I preached only looking in that direction. Even when I made the altar call, I was calling everybody, but generally looking in his direction. And guess who came forward to respond to the altar call? Salongo. But are you getting this? It started with the miracle of his, his twins being healed of their hearing. Now, I went to preach there Six months later, and the pastor told me he has a program of, uh, it's called like Brunjibwansi, whatever. Everybody comes to the church. Yes, everybody comes to the church to utilize their gifts. Now, Salongo is a, a builder, a mason. So I found Salongo. Six months later, he got saved. He became part of the church. I found him in the middle of a week. He was at the church. I think he was constructing the veranda of the church. Are you getting this? A year later, I received the card because Salongo had decided he wanted to wed his Nalongo. They had been living together but not, not married, not wedded. So Salongo decided, told Nalongo that, I want to wed you, and I want to wed you from this church where we got saved. And they had the wedding there. It started with a man dying in the service. Are you getting this? It all started with a man, me, dying in the service. Lord, okay. Whatever happens, it's already too late. I've already told them I want to give them an example. Uh, you know? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, those of you, you, you just, 
you know, enjoy the anointing, whatever. For you to see it, you'll have to step out. I am going to, I'm going to go and after preaching, I will ask anybody who is sick to stand up. Yeah, anybody who is sick. And then I'll lay my hands and I command. And then I tell them, now tell me, is the pain still there or no? Yeah. If one of them says, I had this thing, and as you are praying, it has disappeared. My friend, they will invite you again. <laughs> the Apostle Paul, I want you to see how he did. In Acts chapter 14, Acts chapter 14, verse 8. Okay? Acts chapter 14, verse 8. There sat a man who was unable to use both feet. That's what Luke, how Luke introduces that man. At Lystra, there sat a man who was unable to use both feet. And while Paul was preaching, uh -huh, who found it impossible to use his feet? For he was a cripple from birth and had never walked. See that? He was a cripple from birth and had never walked. Verse 19. Verse 9. Paul was preaching, and Paul gazed at him, observing that he had faith to be healed. Okay? Verse 10. So he had never walked, was a cripple from birth, but he had faith to be healed. So you should be, the Lord will help you to start to see faith. Faith can be seen. Yeah, you can be in a service and you see faith. You can be in a service and you perceive faith. When you perceive faith, start with those ones. Because there are those who have come to see eh, that I hear that he heals. Okay, let me go there and see. If you start with that one, you'll have a bad service. Yeah, you have a bad service. Uh, I hear those places, those people, they have electricity. They put electricity. You start with that person. That's why ushers should be sensitive not to put such people in the front seat. Uh, they will disturb your service. The man had never stood. Paul shouted and said, stand. That's a dying moment in the service. You will either stand or you will go back in the evening and ask the Lord, why did he not stand? Yeah. That is a defining moment. Yeah. Stand. Do. Like I tell people, eat what you never eat. Eat what you have never eaten. Drink. You know, but yeah. We have, we will either die or be healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you have any pain in your body, be healed. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you have any issue, with your muscles, be healed in the name of Jesus. If you have any issue with ulcers, be healed in the name of Jesus. If you have any issue with a night, like Brenda was testifying, maybe you fear to sleep at night, or you have insomnia, be healed in the name of Jesus. If you have any issue with your ears, let them be open in the name of Jesus. Let eyes be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I speak healing. Healing to someone's tubes. In the name of Jesus. I command them to be open. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That pain in the, it's like in the left, left or right. Anyway, there in the flanks on the side, that pain. I command it to go in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak healing to your knees. I speak healing to different parts of your body. After this night, you have a testimony. You have a testimony in the name of Jesus. And Father, this boldness, this faith in the healing ministry, I release it upon people who are in the name of Jesus, 
I release the impartation of the healing grace. The impartation of the healing grace that somebody will leave this place and begin to operate exactly in the things I've been talking about and they will see overwhelming results in the mighty name of Jesus that tumors will instantly disappear as they minister, that asthma will instantly be healed as they minister in the mighty name of Jesus, that they will see migraines suddenly disappear, they will see pain suddenly disappear in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, overcome those that struggle with fear. I pray that you will help them to overcome their fear in the mighty name of Jesus, that they will learn to humble themselves under your mighty hand so that you can lift them up in due time. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said what? Amen. Amen. You will testify. You will testify.